It has happened to everyone, and it keeps happening. The great plague of the century. Computers that freeze for entire minutes due to processes consuming too much RAM. Until the last megabyte, everything seems responsive. But just start a video render, download a file with the browser, or any other scenario that triggers intensive resource usage, and suddenly you enter that cursed state of limbo. The system freezes, the mouse barely moves, if it moves at all, and it becomes impossible to interrupt the processes. Often the only way out is a hard reset, forcibly shutting down the computer. The Linux kernel has very intelligent memory management, but not from the user experience perspective. There's a function called OOM Killer, designed as a last resort, not as desktop responsiveness protection. The kernel tries until the very end not to kill any process, and when it does, it's already too late. RAM and swap are saturated, the system is unusable, and sometimes it doesn't even choose the right process. It might close a browser with 30 tabs while leaving a much less useful program alive. The result is always the same, system freeze, work loss, frustration, and let's face it, a blow to our psychological health. The reason for this choice is engineering related. The kernel considers memory an absolute resource to protect down to the last byte. This approach makes sense on servers where eliminating a critical process can have worse consequences than a temporary freeze. But on desktops, the effect is disastrous. Let's face it, the Linux kernel favors servers. Its development and technological evolution is centered essentially on the server world, and I believe some choices due to this dichotomous nature make sense. Linux runs mainly on servers, and there it has crucially important neuralgic functions. It's the backbone of delicate systems, much more sensitive than our home PCs. Yet there exists a small daemon that demonstrates how the KISS philosophy is often the right path in technology. It's called early oom. It's extremely simple, runs in user space, doesn't consume resources, is predictable and effective. Unlike the kernel's OOM killer, it doesn't wait for collapse. It's proactive, killing processes before memory is completely exhausted, so the user never gets trapped in that endless freeze. This beneficial little demon has literally saved my PC's life, and above all, my mental health. It kills the process that consumes the most resources before it manages to saturate all the RAM and can be configured to always leave 5 or 10% of memory free. It's a brilliant, immediate, intelligent approach of extreme utility. I don't understand why not all distributions have adopted it by default, although I know well how conservative our ecosystem is before embracing new solutions. Let's look at its history then. Early Oom was created by Jakob Unterwurzacher, a German developer, and its first release dates back to December 2013, published on GitHub. The motivation behind this creation was very personal and practical. Svensson had a PC with little RAM, and when memory ran out, the system became completely unusable for entire minutes before the kernel's OOM killer finally kicked in. Tired of this frustrating situation, he decided to write a more aggressive and faster daemon, capable of preventing desktop freezing by intervening before it was too late. From a technical standpoint, early oom runs in user space. It's not integrated into the kernel like the traditional OOM killer. Its operation is elegant in its simplicity. It periodically checks the values in sprosh meminfo, and if free memory drops below the set thresholds, chooses a process to kill usually the one consuming the most RAM or with lower priority. It's much simpler and more predictable than the classic OOM killer, and this is part of its charm. Regarding adoption, for years it remained a niche project, used mainly by those who had lightweight machines or desktops that froze easily. In 2019, it began to gain wider recognition, particularly among Arch Linux and Debian users who appreciated its minimalist philosophy. The breakthrough came in 2020, when Fedora 32 became the first major distribution to include it by default to improve desktop system responsiveness, although it later switched to systemd OMD with Fedora 34. From there, it was also packaged for Debian and Ubuntu, although not always active by default. Installing it is very simple. There are packages for Ubuntu, Debian, and many other distributions. Let's move on to the practical part, how to configure early OOM in detail. Configuration happens mainly through a file that is typically found in the EC default folder within the early OOM file.
This file contains various parameters that allow you to adapt the daemon's behavior to your specific needs. The most important parameter is Magnet M, which sets the minimum available memory threshold. By default, it's set to 10%, which means early OOM starts sending termination signals to processes when available memory drops below this threshold. But you can modify it. If you have a system with lots of RAM, you could set it to 5% to be less aggressive. If instead you have an older computer with little memory, you could raise it to 15% to have more safety margin. The MySS parameter instead controls the swap threshold with the same logic as main memory. Very interesting is the possibility of using two separate values. The first indicates when to start sending the polite SIGTERM signal, the second when to move to the more drastic SIGKILL. For gaming users, a typical configuration might be to protect system processes and favor killing browsers or secondary applications. You can use the avoid parameter with a regex to protect certain processes, such as your favorite game or the audio server. Conversely, Ash prefer with a regex makes certain processes more likely to be killed, which is perfect for heavy browsers like Chrome or Java applications that tend to consume a lot of memory. For developers, instead, you might want to protect your favorite IDE or editor and sacrifice compilation processes or automated tests that can be easily restarted. It's all a matter of priorities and your specific workflow. Early OOM is not the only player in this field. In recent years, several alternatives have emerged, each with their own characteristics. The most famous is probably System DOOMD, which has been integrated directly into Systemd and is therefore available natively on many modern distributions. Fedora has even replaced Early OOM with System Doomed as the default solution in more recent versions. System Doomed uses more sophisticated technology called PSI, pressure stall information, which monitors system stress in a more granular way compared to simple available memory checking. However, System Doomed has a major limitation. It tends to kill entire groups of processes instead of single processes which can mean losing all your work when closing a single problematic application would suffice. Many users have complained about this behavior, so much so that there's a feature request open for years on GitHub to make systemd umd more surgical in its actions. Then there's Nohang, written in Python, which is like early um but on steroids. It has many more configuration options and advanced features, making it perfect for those who want granular control but also more complex to configure. It's the right choice if you need extreme fine-tuning, but for most users it represents overkill. There's also Facebook's OOMD, designed for data centers and enterprise systems, but it's definitely oversized for home desktop use. Why then does early OOM often remain the best choice? Simplicity. It's written in pure C without dependencies, is stable, predictable, and does exactly what it needs to do without frills. It's the perfect embodiment of Unix philosophy, a tool that does one thing, but does it well. Like all automatic tools, early OOM can sometimes make wrong decisions. The most common problem is when it kills an important process instead of the one you'd want terminated. The first solution is to configure the rejects with dash avoid and dash prefer. If your code editor keeps getting terminated, add it to the whitelist with avoid. If instead you want Chrome to always be the first suspect, use prefer to increase its chances of being chosen. Another approach is to adjust memory thresholds. If early OOM is too aggressive, lower the threshold. Going from 10% to 5% will give it less room to maneuver. If instead it's too permissive and the system still freezes, raise the threshold to 15 or even 20%. You can also modify the check interval with the MASR parameter. By default, it checks memory every second but if you have a very fast system, you might want more frequent checks, while on older systems, you might want to reduce the frequency to save resources. Important, there are scenarios where early OOM should not be used. On production servers, for example, where service stability is more important than system responsiveness. In these cases, it's better to rely on the kernel's traditional OOM killer or more sophisticated enterprise solutions. Early OOM was born and designed for desktops, where user experience is prioritized over preserving system processes. Actually, we already have a beautiful solution ready for a problem that many of us suffer from. It's a logical, rational solution, and as we've seen, written in C, it perfectly represents the triumph of KISS philosophy. 
Where many embark on complicated, invasive, even fragmented solutions, this one does one thing and does it damn well, intuitively, with equally simple and essential options. In short, a small daemon that will literally save your PC's life.